This video is an overview of the chemical kinetics chapters of the chemical thermodynamics and kinetics playlist. So we start with the kinetic theory of gases where we are able to compute things like the root mean square speed of a given gas particle in a sample is equal to the square root of 3r times temperature divided by the molar mass of our gas. The most probable speed is slightly less than that, the square root of 2rt over m. And the average speed is equal to the square root of 8 over pi rt over m. We see these graphed up here as they're given locations within the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution for the speeds of molecules, where we have a normalization constant times the speed squared times a, uh, times a Gaussian with respect to the speed. We can also compute properties like the mean free path, the average distance that a gas molecule travels in a sample before colliding with another, which we can compute in terms of either concentration, you know, volume divided by number of particles, or in terms of temperature and pressure, assuming we have an ideal gas. We can also calculate things like the collision frequency or the total collision rate inside a sample of gas particles, which gives us the number of collisions uh, the number of collisions per unit volume per unit time, depending on the cross-sectional areas of our molecules, their uh, densities, and the average speeds that they're traveling relative to one another. We can measure things like reaction rates, which we define as negative 1 over the stoichiometric coefficient times the partial derivative of a reactant concentration with respect to time. If this were a product, this would be a plus sign. Reaction rates are also expressed in terms of rate laws, where we have a rate constant times each reactant to the power of some uh, to the power of some order. The sum of all these coefficients would be the total order of the reaction, where they'd have the order in each of the individual species would be their individual coefficients. Using these rate laws, we can integrate those derivatives to get things called the integrated rate law, where for first order reactions, the rate is equal to the initial rate times a decaying exponential. Uh, various other expressions exist specifically for second order and zero order reactions. We can look at uh, concepts like half-life. How long does it take for this concentration to decay to half of its original value? For first order reactions, that is independent of the concentration and is just the natural log of 2 divided by the rate constant. Then we can look at concepts like reaction coordinate, where we have our reactants and we go up to a transition state. We have to overcome some activation barrier, delta E of activation, in order to do so, going down to products. And if we do the reverse reaction, we have to overcome this barrier in reverse. So the rate constant can be predicted from the quantity, the activation energy. So the Arrhenius equation gives us that the rate constant is some pre-exponential factor times e to the negative activation energy over gas constant times temperature. Finally, we have a chapter on reaction mechanisms, where a mechanism is the set of elementary reactions that occur in order to form a complex set of reactions. So an elementary reaction is just an individual chemical collision that results in some change in the structure of the uh, reactants that are involved. So for example, we might have an intermediate here in these to elementary steps which take place to form this complex total reaction from reactants to products. The principle of detailed balance tells us that the equilibrium constant of a given individual step is equal to the forward and reverse rate constant ratios. If we have multiple steps in a reaction, then the rate determining step is the one where the rate constant is much, much slower than the other ones, where it's going to determine the rate law, hence the name rate determining step. We use the steady state approximation for complex, um, for complex rate expressions in order to help us derive the concentrations of intermediates by saying that the concentration of our intermediate does not change over time. Its first derivative with respect to time is zero. Catalysis works by lowering the activation barrier of our individual reactions, and we can show that through an analysis of the rate constants being much, much faster. And finally, we look at other applications like either unimolecular reactions or the Michaelis-Menten mechanism for enzyme kinetics, where the initial rate is equal to a maximum rate 
times our substrate concentration divided by the Michaelis constant plus the substrate concentration. So at low substrate concentration, we are first order where all the substrate is, is interacting with available enzyme, but eventually that enzyme concentration gets saturated and we reach a saturating point where it becomes zero order in the concentration of the substrate. So these are the three chapters in chemical kinetics, links to each of these in the on-screen annotations and in the description, uh, as well as uh, the chapter reviews uh, linking to the individual videos.